I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. This is a video about the new pinata event that's been going on lately, and I gotta say, it's pretty darn fun. And we'll talk about it and uh, at length today, and kind of just chit chat about a lot of things. We're in the Michelangelo right now, but before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. Two thousand subs, almost there, guys. We're gonna do a free premium DD giveaway. We're excited about that. But thank you guys for building the community, having a great time, and just tuning in. Just to sit and watch uh, me shooting ships and uh, talking about ships and how to get better at ships shooting, right? So, as always, uh, it's been a blast. Hope you guys had a great weekend, holiday uh, weekend. Uh, I think there was a lot of events going on, Easter and and so forth. But hope you guys had a great weekend. Have fun. And uh, and it was really a blast trying out the, the new ships and events and everything like that. Uh, really, you can pick almost any kind of ship you want, really, for this mode. Uh, Pinata event, if you don't know what it is right now, it actually has a recording of this video. I'm looking at the website right now. Eight days and six hours left uh, to actually participate in this event. And what it is is a different mode that you can try different mechanics in that I think Wargaming is trying to introduce. Is That could be a good thing or a bad thing. That I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. But it's, I think it really brings back brawling. And if you want to make money, this is a great idea because you're getting a lot of damage in. You're actually forcing players to go forward, and you're actually making credits off of it based on the damage. Now, we'll talk about more of that later as we go through. So we're, look what, the, what is the basic premise of this. So you start off on uh, each side. It's almost kind of like the convoy escort, except you're blowing up the convoy at this point. It's computer AI controlled. It's really, you can see right there, they selected the SX right here. It's going to be a carrier that can uh, launch planes, of course, as always, but it's controlled by the computer. And the computer bot is just driving around, just following the path, as you can see. And the other, both opposing sides, green and red team, are going to try to blow it up and maybe get uh, a points off of it based on where it dies at. So when you kill this thing, the Essex right there, uh, it will then spawn a kind of a cap area that's constant uh, that is stationary. So once it dies where it's at, that's the center point of the cap, and it begins to shrink. So that cap. You're going to capture it, and then if you capture it in time, it's going to tick up 25 points towards your overall score to get to 1,000. First team gets to 1,000 or kills all the ships wins, right? So it's actually pretty fun. It actually encourages brawling. I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, you got one of those onesie twosie guys that are actually sitting in the back of the map still acting like this is some kind of randoms map, but we don't care about them. We care about what we're going to do to help the team, right? So the objective really is, one, either kill all the other ships, like as always, or two, actually get into the cap point of this uh, this uh, computer-controlled ship once it blows up and capture it and hold it. And the longer you hold it, actually, actually you can build up points a lot faster than the normal way. 25 uh, points, I believe, per every couple seconds, like I mentioned. And you can also get power-ups and things of that nature. If you can see in the slot at the bottom right corner, I have this special power-up. I think you can drop smoke anywhere you want. There's other perks like people are invulnerable. You get heals, special damage cons. I think there's even a bombing, uh, a close air support bombing run area. I think it was pretty cool. Although it's terrible if you're, you know, the ship getting bombed. But uh, I digress. But anyways, uh, what I find really is awesome about this is actually, like I said, encourages brawling. You get to bring out your brawling ships, like this Michelangelo full sap secondaries kind of believe, uh, kind of uh, if you want to believe that. Full sap secondaries, they're really awesome. And here's that little smoke drop. See, I go to the mini map, I drop the smoke in front of me. That's where the smoke will be laid. Here come the airplanes, and the, the AI is literally controlling the airplanes for me, and it drops the smoke. I think they're trying this out to see if, hey, let's not give the player base control of it anymore. Let's just have AI just put smoke down, put mines down, put bombing fields down. So I think AOR Gaming is trying to spice up the, the gameplay by introducing these new, tar uh, I guess you could say, tactical consumables. And you can see a lot of extra little power-ups, acceleration improvement. Now, you see that shield that goes, went around that, uh, that destroyer right there? That is another power-up where uh, Friendly basically activated it, and it makes everybody invulnerable for, I believe, about 10 seconds or plus just. So you can't get killed or damaged right there. See all my seconds to shoot him, nothing's happening, and it goes away. So, you know, so it lasted about, I would say, give or take 10 seconds. So, uh, secondaries are now locked onto the ZF... I think it's a ZF-6, right? Yeah, ZF-6, yeah. Uh, ZF-6, and they're getting some good damage. We're getting some torpedo damage right there. And this is actually encouraging brawling. Oh, my gosh. What the game used to be like where everybody rush into the, the area and try to get grab cover and just start blasting everybody away, and you weren't afraid of getting killed because that's, that's, that's the point of the game. You're, you're going to die. You're going to win. Just, you just got to understand you got to accept it rather than be so scared to lose your ship you're not willing to sacrifice anything. And we fire some nice sap shells right. Ooh, 10,000 damage. I'm telling you, Michelangelo is one of the most powerful ships I've seen in the game. I had reservations about it at first, but I think it was an event, like Fear Missing Out event, where it was a dockyard thing, whatever. Uh, if you didn't get it, don't worry. Hopefully, it'll come back soon. But basically, it was focused on a battle cruiser type style of secondary focus, uh, sap secondary kind of ship. 
Kind of like the Napoli. I still think the Napoli does a better job because the guns at least move around a little bit better. Now, the Michelangelo has these um, turrets in the middle that are 360 turrets. However, you got to get angles in order to get them to operate and shoot because obviously the guns in the center are going to get in front of the smokestacks and the center of the center line of the superstructure. Obviously, you can't fire straight on. However, you can do this where you're exposing a little bit more broadside. You get a nice step secondaries out there to about 10 and a half range right there, and you're getting some damage. And you got torpedoes and crawling or exhaust smoke that is exhaust smoke. So awesome, pretty awesome idea, and it encourages brawling again. Yay! I mean, I like that. I, I like the fact that there actually was. And an objective now, you, can, you do see some of the ships in the back still holding. Now, they're just probably tactic tactically waiting, right? Um, rather than running to the back of the map or doing anything. I think it encourages a little bit better gameplay style, and I actually enjoyed it. I, I find that I've gotten more damage and more uh, you know, situations that are even more interesting and fun with this kind of mode. So, good job, Wargaming. I mean, that's a very odd... Ooh, Splash 102 there. We got two kills already. I have to say, the first time I'm, I, in my life to say this, but Wargaming actually did something a little right here where they actually found a niche where you actually have a cap point that shrinks so forces players to go in the middle where it just ends really quick. So it actually has to force you to... Otherwise, people are just saving their ship to get to the next round. It makes no point. I mean, this is a simulation game. I mean, if you lose your ship, great. Re hit the restart button, go to the menu, and start over again. Your, your ship is not stuck in a battle like it did before. You can get the ship once you die, go back into another battle, and play again. And it actually rewards you. I think I, I got a lot of money out of this this mode, kind of like clan battle style. I'm not saying... Now, I have to have, of course, modifier flags in order to multiply that factor in. Wargaming is a fix that problem, too. The credit system is totally inflated, and you're losing money every time you play unless you get modes like this so either you they got to get more flags to get the modifiers or they're gonna have to just reward people for playing the game rather than i feel like they're just trying to kill the inflation anyways you can see right now my team is kind of like five and versus three it's the enemy team still has every chance to win this it's not over they see the how this the cap circle on the mini map is shrinking my team is inside the center there now we lose our another ship of ours the wujing or wukong that's not good. So we're going to actually have to push in here and get brawling again because we need to save the day. Otherwise, our team could risk and blow this thing. Um, again, I like it. I enjoy it. It's pretty interesting. The games are really quick, but they're also very, uh, I would say, dynamic because, of course, it depends on where the thing now we lost an encounter. It depends on where the cap point was at, where it died at. And, of course, an agar of theirs goes down. So it's three versus two. Anybody's game at this point. And uh, we're trying to rush in, and we're doing a little bit of brawling, a little bit of shooting, and you're not singled out by a carrier, or you're not singled out by a submarine. Uh, I do believe submarines are allowed in this uh, mode, but that's unfortunate. I haven't seen carrier players yet, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, If besides the bot, of course. The bot can be a carrier, whoop you do but I haven't seen I Again, I have to say, this mode is really, really enjoyable. Now, a little bit about the Michelangelo, if you don't, again, just talking about it. As you can see, the play style of it, it's kind of... Uh, Kind of multi-dimensional. I mean, you could say it could go in and try to shoot with its main guns, but I think the, the, the bread and butter of it is the secondaries and trying to get in there using exhaust smoke and trying to just create a lot of damage. And there's this gimmick right here where you're invulnerable. Now, that I know what you're thinking. Is that realistic? No, you're not going to get a force field shield. Again, this is kind of catering to that special kind of gameplay style of special events just to get fun. Now, it does encourage brawling a little bit more because guess what? If you can go in without taking damage... More power, too. Even the bot had to have it. He had to have the invulnerable damage. I mean, look, we're 2-2 two to two now. Even at the beginning of the game, you saw the bot, the uh, the computer-controlled ship, had the invulnerability every so... Uh, every, I guess you could say every minute or something like that on a countdown timer. So, again, even the bot needed an extra health, an extra AP to even work. So, Wargaming is saying that if you ever want to get something done, you got to go in there and splash three, rather, you get the uh, next kill. Two versus one now. See if we can get this thing, and hopefully our Schultz, F. Schultz doesn't die. Uh, but we can take on the Carl Van Johan. But going back to what I was talking about, if Wargaming thinks that you need to have these invulnerabilities, that tells you something wrong with the game because that means that you can't survive pushing in and doing anything and actually shooting games. Otherwise, it would end so fast. Either you got to do one of two things. Either one, create respawn points where just like in Call of Duty, when you die, you come back and just focus on objective gameplay. I think that encourages more gameplay rather than and not. Or you're going to have to give them some, some of these little gimmicks here where you can actually push in and actually use the characteristics of the ship, like brawling, you know, shooting, and torpedoing, and things, ba basic ideas of that nature, where it that's what wargaming, when I first saw the commercial for War World of Warships, I thought it was literally just ships like blasting at each other left and right, and kind of like the old pirate days where you have the cannons on the deck of a pirate ship firing back and forth. I mean, that's what I thought was enjoyable, and it really, I guess you say attractive, to make me want to even download the game and play it. So maybe this mode actually might encourage it. I'm sorry to say, but... 
Might have to add gimmicks in order to get the player base to get back into this thing. Otherwise, we're just shooting from the back of spawns. What is this game at that point? It's kind of like an art another lemming artillery game where you're just sitting in the back waiting, just slowly shooting at each other and hoping shells land. And that can get old after a while. It's pretty pretty old pretty quickly. So, um, anyways, our sap secondaries are within range of the Carvan Luhan. Now, beautiful colors, by the way. It's really awesome. Very good artistic department. The mountain up in the background has eyeballs looking at you. Pretty interesting. And we're going to see if we can get the uh, the kill here and save our F Schultz. Now, this is where it, I you this is why it's enjoyable because I know that my actions actually have some kind of impact in the game. That I didn't throw away my ship, I or I did strategically move around, or I did use the characteristics to shoot. And there we go. It's one versus one now. It's anybody's game. We've got three kills, 180,000 damage, and and uh, we have to make it break this uh, dealer here. Now we've got the heals. We saved them enough that we can come back and save the day and save our ship. And now we all have to do is just do these secondaries. Now, look at the second sap secondaries. These things are literally horrendous. They can chop away your health so quickly that you don't even realize it. And uh, it, these are brutal. I mean, really, really awesome. I like the Michelangelo for that reason, especially for this mode. Great at brawling, good, fun shooting, just good in, going in close out rather than running away and shooting from a distance. And do we get this final kill? Four kills right there, Splash 4. 197,000 damage, guys. 197,000. I haven't had a game like that in a while uh, in randoms or in clan or ranked or whatever, but this mode is pretty darn fun, I have to say. I'm, I've actually enjoyed myself, um, but it's really interesting, and we'll take a look at the stats here to see are, are they actually worth it. So, look at 280 secondary brawl hits. Look at that. Number one in the team. Great. Four ship kills. You expect that. Uh, 67,000 secondary area damage, 107, 103,000 on the main battery. And look, we're getting money. Oh my gosh. Finally credits that actually come actually work, you know? So here's the build on the ship. Like I always do at the, at the end of my videos, pure secondary build, just primary focus. And you also have the consumable there. You have those extra new consumables. And of course you get those tokens, pinata tokens for you to spend in the store or whatever. Um, uh, but let's go with the Illinois. Now here's my, also another favorite ship of mine back in the day. There's another ship that was a fear of missing out FOMO dockyard, whatever it was, or actually it wasn't a dockyard. It was a, um, what was it? Some kind of event where you had to buy a lot, spend a lot of money, basically yeah, spend money to get the crates. Uh, but yeah, I got it. I was afraid. I was, I, I get it. I'm, I'm the one I was afraid of missing out on this thing, but I'm glad I didn't miss out on it. I like the Illinois. It is awesome. The American battleship line is just so phenomenal. I'm a, I, I'm a history guy. I love it. I love looking at the old battleships. I've visited the Missouri. I've visited all these. You know, I want to go visit some of the uh, Wisconsin's and New Jersey's. I want to see. I've seen the Midway. I've seen the carriers. I, I just really like the history and the, 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 amount of, the amount of engineering that had to go through it to create these vessels and just uh, make them in great historical landmarks. Very awesome and very patriotic, too. That's me being in the military, as always. Thank you, everybody, for their service. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to lead, uh, you know, uh, other uh, airmen and uh, soldiers in the fight, and it's pretty awesome. And I just I got to say, it's it's a pretty, uh, you get choked up about it. But I do appreciate the historical value of everything, and I think that's why I like World Warships, because a lot of these historical things do exist, and some are paper ships, some are real ships, and you actually get to visit them, see them, or you get to admire them. And it's pretty inspiring to see it, because you don't see them anymore as, uh, as often. Anyways, we're in Illinois. If you don't know what it is, 12 guns, Des Moines-style guns, that is. So you got 12 of these things on a battleship-style hull. So I always call the Illinois the super kind of ship because it's literally got everything you want baked into it. Um, you have the speed of, I would say, a good, nice battle cruiser, speed of almost some destroyers. You've got the 12 Des Moines-style cruiser caliber guns that are shooting and starting fires all over the place, which I do really love. Look at the reload on this thing. These reloads are awesome. Then you can get it down to about, what, seven seconds? Let me take another shot at it. Yeah, seven and a half seconds. Pretty awesome. Starting fires like a madman. Uh, pretty awesome there. And it's also got the armor of, of course, a battleship slash cruiser. It's not the greatest armor, I would say, but it's still enough to at least survive. It's got good dispersion you can hit. It's got the speed that you need to get out there. And look at that. We're, we're just slamming destroyers, too. And it's just so fun. And it's got these nice heels that you get for, uh, I believe, kind of along the lines of Georgia. So it's kind of like a Georgia with Des Moines power caliber guns with the speed of a destroyer. So you got everything. I mean, you got everything you need uh, in this kind of just brawling kind of uh, in intensity right here. And there it is, Flash 1 taking out the destroyer. 57,000 damage in the first four minutes of the game, and that's really awesome. Of course, you got that invulnerable hero you see right there that ships are using, and every right so, because guess what? It's going to take some health to, to drive in, and you're going to have to have health in the drive towards the target and objective to survive to even begin the engagement. So... I think that they're trying to get down to get brawling back in this mode. It just seems like that with all these power-ups power and gimmicks. It's pretty cool. 
Now, the cool thing is I like about that Lenoi, now you can actually stop here and just kind of brawl with the front two guns at eight turrets, and you're starting a lot of fires, getting a lot of nice juicy damage. Again, it's like having a Des Moines on a battleship hull. And you can see we're getting some nice, good, good, a lot of fires and a lot of damage on the Duncan right here. Now, you see we're slamming in full reverse. We take a lot of damage. We, we go ahead and slam reverse, do the damage con, and then we hit our heels right there. Now, you'll notice in my slot for the Illinois, we have these kind of a super damage con which I think it puts out every fire and flood and gives you an extra 30% of invulnerability, not invulnerability, but you won't get set on fire or flood at that moment. And it actually does it for everybody on your team where it's a universal damage con. So I, as soon as I hit that button, everybody uh, is ceased of uh, fire and flood and pretty much everybody's got that quick, immediate uh, cooldown. There goes that first kill right there, splash, or sorry, second kill there, splash 207,000 damage, and that is, ooh, we take a hit right there, and we use our, there it is, our special HP being partially healed, so you get a little bit of HP back, and you damage con everybody, and you repair everybody, so uh, we're, it's kind of like a quick damage con for everybody at that given moment. Pretty awesome, and it helps out the team. I like that. It's like, it, it actually encourages helpful teamwork i mean goodness you gotta actually plan for it sometimes one person has the the bomber raid some person one person has the smoke screen raid some one person has the consumable to damage con one person has the consumable to heal or sorry to be invulnerable so pretty awesome i, I like the fact it's encouraging a little bit more gameplay now notice that our team is actually at least together not then spread out and running away from each other we're actually maximizing our our aa builds if you want to call that and we're also focus firing and trying to get to the objective and trying to get these power-ups. You notice on the mini-map there's a box with a star on it. That's also another power-up, a consumable you can get and achieve and have and save in your back pocket. So pretty awesome there. We're also uh, getting to shoot and constantly... You're always seeing action in this game. That's really awesome. I like about the Pinata event. It gives you a lot of action, rewards you for the rewards that you're doing. Uh, so what a game should do in reality, in all reality, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, again, other things I like about the Illinois, um, the fact that it's a, it's still maneuverable, it still moves like a battleship, but it, at least you can get around and, and move and engage, and you're not just sitting still, and you're still launching shells at a distance. Uh, it's got a great reel array. The AP shells are just like the Des Moines, very good, nice broadside damage. Um, I don't know if we're at this range. Look how floaty these shells are. You really got to lead these things, and if you can hit you know, on the mark, then you are a good aimer right there. 122,000 damage in the first seven minutes of the game, and we are rocking and rolling, and we're going to try to push behind this island here and get a better angle. And again, I like this. That this is also encouraging flanking and also encourages nice getting uh, these crossfires because now everybody's focused on the middle, they're focused on the ship, or they're focused on the objective, and there's so many things to focus on. It's just constant chaos, which I do appreciate. Look where everybody's at. I mean, I have to say, look, I'm just looking at the results here. Everybody is in the middle of the area of where the, uh, the objective and the cap point is. Isn't that great? Nobody is in keypad 810 or they're in J1. I mean, nobody's there. Actually, everybody's doing the objective, and I'm actually appreciating that. This, this is actually a good thing, Wargaming. Now, the buffs and everything, that might be the second opinion. I don't know if we need this many. Um, maybe just initially to get into the cap and maybe to engage and doing it sporadically at these little moments and their short bursts, short-lived kind of little consumables might be an okay thing because it's not too overpowered where it's ruining the game, but it is giving somewhat of a tactical advantage to move because obviously battleships and ships move slow. They're not like fighter jets, but they're giving you enough time to actually get into position and move around and be concealed. Like you can use mobile smoke, you can have mobile bombers, you can have, uh, what is it, heels and shields and all these wonderful things. Um, it might be a step in the, the, the direction that we need. Don't know if it's completely entirely correct, but anyways... Let's, uh, let's look at some of the action shooting out the Schroeder here. That's another ship I'd like to have. I think, unfortunately, I missed out on that event. Schroeder's good at secondaries. Ooh, we got stuck on the island now. We're just going to switch to HE. Yeah, we'll get some HE shots. And then get, we get the kill. Oh, my goodness. I didn't expect that one. Over the islands. Three, splash three. 148,000 damage. And we are rocking and rolling, guys. And look, you can see the, the objective slowly shrinking. You see the circle right there behind that ship? Missouri, another favorite battleship of mine. This, the circle's slowly shrinking and readjusted to a smaller cap circle, giving us, both sides, a tactical advantage. Like It, does, it means that one team can't just hold on to the point. This is almost kind of like Battle Royale in Call of Duty, or uh, whatever is it, Warzone or Battle Royale, whatever. The one where you're actually fighting and where the ring of smoke shrinks, and you, it's King of the Hill, basically, at that point. So this is kind of like King of the Hill. Uh, pretty awesome. I, I like that. It forces people to stop sitting in the back. And look, the, the points would tick up plus 25 every couple seconds. So you're going to have to be in the center there, and it forces a lot of brawling. I like it. You know, Missouri charging in is awesome. And charging destroyers and battleships. Unfortunately, he takes a lot of damage in there. It's still World Warships, of course. And we do we get this mop-up kill? And we do. Steel kill number four right there. 170,000 damage. Again, 170,000 damage game. I mean, 
very odd and rare in this day and age for me and lately, but we're getting it in the pinata bin. Anyways, you guys try it out. You got eight days left. I definitely encourage it. Illinois Michelangelo, great ships. I really enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Just watch them just brawl and blast people. And brawling uh, kind of is back with this pinata event. As always, like, subscribe, bell button below. We'll do that uh, 2000 sub, do free premium DD giveaway. The bill will be at the end of the screen. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you had a great weekend. And as always, you guys stay safe. Say hi out there when you see me. Take care. Cheers.